Gel electrophoresis is a basic tool used to separate molecules based on charge and size. This is done by passing an electric current over a gel, forcing the molecules of interest within the gel to migrate at varying speeds across it. We're going to look at the simplest example of gel electrophoresis for the separation of DNA, but keep in mind that this is a very versatile tool that can be modified for other types of molecules and is regularly used to separate not just DNA, but RNA and protein as well. The first step in gel electrophoresis is to prepare the gel. For the separation of DNA, we use an agrose gel. Agrose is a polymer derived from red seaweed, commercially available as a powder. This is added to a buffer, and the solution is poured into a casting tray. A comb is added at the top, and the solution is allowed to solidify. Once it has solidified, the comb is removed, and the agrose gel is ready. It looks like a thin slab of gelatin, with wells along the top, or pockets created by the comb. This is where the sample will be added. The agrose gel is added to an electrophoresis chamber, which is a plastic reservoir with an electrode on either end connected to a power supply. More of the electrophoretic buffer is added to fill the chamber and cover the gel, and the samples are loaded into the wells. At this point, the gel is ready to run, and the power supply is turned on. With the current running through the buffer, the DNA begins to migrate through the gel. Recall that DNA consists of a chain of nucleotides, which each contains a nitrogenous base, a five carbon sugar, and a negatively charged phosphate group. It is this phosphate backbone that imparts the DNA molecules with an overall negative charge. This is why DNA molecules migrate towards the positive electrode during electrophoresis. Note that the smaller DNA molecules travel further along the gel. This is because the agarose creates a mesh-like network with pores that allow smaller molecules to travel faster while impeding the larger molecules, so that shorter DNA fragments travel faster and further along the gel than the larger fragments. Let's look at another gel. Typically, a molecular marker or a DNA ladder is loaded alongside the rest of the samples. This ladder is a mixed solution of DNA fragments of known sizes. Because fragments of the same size run at the same speed, we can use the positions of the ladder markers to determine the sizes of the other DNA fragments in the rest of the samples. For example, lanes A and C both have bands at the same position as the 500 base pair marker, telling us that these fragments are approximately 500 base pairs in length while lanes B and C have bands that are approximately 100 base pairs in length. Keep in mind that actual DNA is invisible. Here's an example of a typical DNA gel. Even after running the DNA samples, the gel appears blank. While there are many ways to visualize the DNA, the simplest way is to add DNA dye to the samples before they are run. Here are some examples of DNA gels with different types of dye used. In these images, we can see the DNA showing up as many distinct bands on each of these gels. Even DNA dye is not visible to the naked eye, and so each of these images was produced with a specialized camera capable of detecting the dyes used. Here we have a DNA gel prepared by U of G human genetics students. For this gel, students prepared and analyzed their own DNA. We can see that a ladder was run in the first lane along with four samples. We can compare the ladder markers to the manufacturer's information sheet to label the ladder and determine the sizes of the DNA fragments in the rest of the samples. For example, according to this information, sample one has three bands at approximately 220, 175, and 50 base pairs each. Throughout these tutorials, we're gonna look at a lot of DNA gels, as well as other applications of gel electrophoresis. So it's important that you are able to analyze this type of data.